How to measure the accuracy of your forecast? In today's video, I'm going to try three ways to determine which method is the best. Hi, my name is John and I'm from Business Focus, helping your business achieve your goals. If you're new to this channel, don't forget to subscribe and let's get started. Three ways to measure the accuracy of your forecast. Now, we have a sample data set again, comprised of actual sales for the past 10 days. So if you want to forecast that, you can check out my other video, how to forecast your data. So the question you're asking yourself is, how do you know which method is the most accurate? Is it naive, moving average, exponential smoothing, or trend projection? We have three measures to do that. So first is determining the mean absolute deviation or your MAD. To do that, we need first to determine four columns. First is your actual, which is already given. The second column is your forecast. In this case, it's the naive method we'll be utilizing. So the first thing you need to ask is how early can you forecast your data? So for the naive method, we can only forecast day 2 as a reference. So we'll use day 1 as a reference, so we get 21.6, then cut and paste the rest, so all the way to day 10. So once you have your forecast, you can now determine the next column, which is creating a forecast error column. To determine that, you just subtract your actual data minus your forecast, and get 1.3. So you copy and paste the rest. Next is the absolute forecast error by getting the absolute value of your forecast error row. In this case, you get 1.3 again. And copy and paste the rest. Once you have that, you can now solve for the mean absolute deviation. You simply get the average of the absolute forecast error column and you get 2.53. Next is the mean squared error. To determine that, you just need to add one more column, which is the squared error. And to determine the squared error, you just get the square of your forecast error raised to the second power. And you get 1.69. So copy and paste the rest. And then again, you get the average of the column under squared error to determine your MSC. In this case, you get 7.41. Next, the mean absolute percent error. To determine that, you just need to add one more column, which is the percent error. And to determine that, you just need to multiply 100 times the absolute forecast error divided by the actual rate. And you get 5.68. So copy and paste the rest. And again, to determine the MATE, you get the average. You get 9.48. Now we have the MAD, MSE, and MAPE of the naive method. You simply have to do the same process for the other three methods and compare which one is the most accurate. So next is the moving average. So to get the forecast, or in this case the earliest forecast, is day 4. So to do that, we need to go to data analysis. So for more information on how to enable data analysis, you can check out my other videos. So once you select the data tab, select data analysis, choose moving average, then input the range, in this case the sales, all the way to day 10. Then label the first row, or put the check in the label first row. Then input the interval, in this case it's 3 days, moving average, or 3 days. Then the output range is on, let's display it on day 2. And select OK. Now we have the forecast. Here is the result of the MAD, MSE, MAPE for moving average. Next is exponential smoothing. So in order to forecast that, we'll be using data analysis. So go back to data tab, select data analysis, select exponential smoothing. And again, you'll be asked to input the data range. In this case, it's your sales column. The dumping factor is 0.8. Check the box for labels and let's output it on day one. And now we have the forecast for exponential smoothing. And now we have the MAD, MSE, and MAPE for exponential smoothing. Next is trend projection. We simply use regression to determine the forecast. And you can now forecast day 1 all the way to day 10. To do that, we need the regression summary output. So simply go to data tab, select data analysis, and select regression. So for your Y input range, that's your dependent variable, your sales column. For your input X range, that's your independent variable, in this case is days. And then your output range, oh, make sure to check the box for labels. Then out output range, let's use the same worksheet. Select OK. So we'll be using the coefficient primary of the Y and the slope only. So to determine our forecast for day 1, 
So that's y is equals to mx plus t. So our slope here is 1.1 times our independent variable, in this case day 1, close parentheses, plus our y-intercept, in this case is 20.4. So we need to lock the cell for your y-intercept as well as your slope so that we can copy and paste the rest. And now we have the MAD, MSE, and MEP for trend projection. Here we have a summary of the different measures using different methods. So you can clearly see here that trend projection yielded the best result in terms of having the smallest deviation in terms of how close it is to the actual data. You have now reached the end of the video. Don't forget to leave a comment down below and hit the like button. For more guides, tutorials, and tips, you can check out my other videos. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one.